purpose, power, profit. It's time for another three-piece success session with your host, Robert Kennedy III, RK3. Are you ready? It's time. Hey, everyone. This is Robert Kennedy III, uh, RK3. That's what they call me. I'm just going crazy here with my nicknames. I just love having fun. I love sharing information with you, with everyone, especially business owners, small business owners. And this month, the month of July, we're talking about purpose, power, and profit. We're actually starting the Purpose, Power, and Profit Club. So if you've not checked it out yet, I want you to go to PurposePowerProfit.com and sign up there. The idea is that if you've got skills, everybody has unique skills, gifts, and abilities, and you, uh, an area of greatest influence. And the reason why a lot of people are not fulfilled or not happy in the place that they are currently, if you're in a job and you're not thrilled with what you're doing, there may be an issue of purpose. So what we want to do is help you to align that with whatever it is that you're doing so that you can work in a state of power and then figure out how to use those gifts and skills to bring profit. First, to serve other people and then bring profit through that. So again, purpose, power, and profit is what we're after. PurposePowerProfit.com. I want you to go there and check that out and sign up if you've not done so. So today we're doing what is called a profit session. The end piece of Purpose Power Profit is that you have a, a business that you're starting and you've got to figure out the, the best way to do that. A lot of people start businesses and they say that after five years about 80 plus percent of small businesses don't make it. So, um, and, and maybe I've got my statistics wrong, but I've got somebody here online or on the show with me that is going to share some information with you about small businesses and entrepreneurship and getting started and how to do that. And this 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 guy, awesome guy, love uh, his his presence and, and just connecting with him. I connected with him through a, a, a previous client of mine that was is, is an attorney as well and started his own mediation business or was starting his own mediation business and he introduced me to attorney Dimitri Chambers who is out of Texas and he is a small business rock star and tells you how what are the structures and what are the things that you need to do to get your small business moving so let me shut up for a second and introduce uh, attorney Chambers Dimitri how are you doing today I'm doing well. How about you, Robert? I'm doing excellent. It's been, uh, we got a lot of sunlight here, so I, I see light and I'm walking around, so that's a great thing, and I'm breathing. That's great. Same here. <laughs> awesome. So t tell me a little bit about your, your, your background and what you do with, with small business owners right now. Well, I have been practicing law over 20 years, uh, mm -hmm. representing primarily small to mid-sized mid businesses. Um, everything from your startup all the way to your, your very advanced uh, multi-million dollar company. Um, and we've been doing that. I'm in a partnership with Kenneth Walker, and we're out of Texas. Kenneth is in Dallas. I'm in Houston. And we, we represent clients all over the country mm -hmm. um, in all types of business deals and business relationships and partnerships and what have you. Okay. And so what we like to do is we, we always like to talk to partners, businesses, especially at the startup stage, to, to help them structure and get off to the right start. Excellent. Excellent. So, I, you know, I, I have got probably a lot of questions that I could ask. I know I, this is my uh, fourth business. I've, I've had three previous ones. The first two were ones that I worked in. Um, while I was doing something else full time, and then my third business was the first one that I uh, did on its own, you know, with with nothing else as kind of a, as a backup system. So, uh, you know, there were definitely some trials and errors, and you know, some successes, of course, through all of that. And so, the biggest thing that I would say that I would do again is really try to find a little bit more guidance the first time through. I did not have an attorney or I did not check out what are some of the things. I did a lot of reading. I went to the library, but there were some things that I could have done maybe a little bit more efficiently. 
with regard to my business structure. So I, I know that you've got quite a bit of that to share with us today. So um, wh why don't you go ahead and do that? Why, why don't you share that with us if, if you can? Robert, there's so much that I could share in that area. Um, the, the main thing when you're starting your business is to try to make sure that, that you, you watch your blind spots. There's a lot of things that you, you may know how to make apple pies, but you may not know that when you read your lease agreement for the building that you're leasing, that you, you need to understand that lease and know um, what all the hitting traps are for you. Mm -hmm. um, so th the key is to know when to call an attorney to help you with the part of the business that you know little to nothing about. Um, you always want to know where you're going in business, where you're trying to go and how you're going to get there and who you need to get you there. Right. And, and those types of things you need to really understand well. Yeah. Yeah. So tell, tell, why don't you tell us a little bit about, I know you, you have a, a presentation there that talks about, um, you know, business structures and some of the, the best ways or some of the best things that you need to do to get moving. Would you, would you be able to share that with us this morning? Yes, I'll, I'll start by saying that a lot of businesses don't think about structuring until they're well into the business process. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, two people come together to do something together in business. They don't think about what does it really mean for us to be partners. Right. What is the difference between being a partner versus a sole proprietorship? Why should we be a corporation? Should we be a limited liability company? Mm -hmm. They just go forward and do business, and then something comes up. For example, a lawsuit is filed, and then they go to the lawyer, and they, they find out that had they structured differently, they could have at least minimized some of the liability. Right. So today we'll be talking about why think about structuring so early in the business process, and how does structuring properly help my business for the long term? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, why, why don't you go ahead and I, I think start your screen shader, and you can kind of take us through that process because it's I know that it's uh, very very important from personal experience. I've had situations where I've had um, legal things that I've had to go through, and I've been protected because, or my personal self was protected because I did I I had. Um, a limited liability company or a limited liability uh, partnership set up that protected my personal from that. Yes. So um, I'm going to flip over here so that we can start seeing your screen. And yeah, go ahead and take us through. Okay. The, 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 the question today, today is the things that we should think about when structuring our business. Now, I'll start with a scenario. Um, we have Jack here who owns a truck driving, a trucking company, and in his business he transports hazardous waste across state lines. So he's, he's transporting toxic material from one state to another. On the other hand, we have Jill who owns a truck washing company. Her job, her, her business, they, they wash trucks. Well, they're friends, so they get together sometime, someday over coffee, and Jack tells Jill, you know what, I'm making a killing in this business, making a lot of money. My problem is that I, I need a more efficient way to get my trucks washed. So if I just could partner up with someone to wash trucks, my trucks, then my business would grow and, 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 and be a, a lot more profitable. So they have this great idea. They join the businesses together and they agree to form a partnership. Um, in most states, it, it, you don't have to do anything formal to, to have a partnership. All you have to do is just agree to be in business together. Now, I always recommend that people actually have partnership agreements so that, is, so that it is clear why we're in partnership together what will be the, the profit split, what will be the cost and expense split, and you know where will we office, and all of those things. It, it's, now, it's always nice to have in your partnership agreement. 
including your dispute resolution process because you know you there there's no way to be in a partnership for any long term period and there not be some kind of disagreement about something so it's always nice to have a dis a dispute resolution process but Jack and Jill formed this partnership so on today um, June 20th for example one of the truck drivers while driving under the influence of alcohol crashes into another vehicle and causes damages to the victims and also spills hazardous waste on the highway so now you've got a liability you've got victims of a of another another vehicle who have been harmed and you now have hazardous waste spilled all over the highway so the question is who is likely to be sued in this situation well and the other question is even if both are sued who's going to be likely liable for the cleanup those are two distinct questions the first question with respect to who will be sued I can promise you that Jack will be sued in his individual capacity Jill will be sued in her individual capacity and the partnership as an entity will be sued as a business entity so you've got three defendants here well who is likely to be ultimately liable well because they are a partnership and nothing else all three parties are likely to be liable so when you're thinking about structuring you need to be thinking about liability and risk now the ultimate goal is is twofold when you're thinking about structuring one you want to maximize your flexibility what business is all about is having the opportunity to to use your your talents and skills to do what you want to do so you you always want to be able to have maximum flexibility but at the same time you want to be able to limit or minimize your personal risk meaning I I don't want my partner in Dallas um, let's just say he gets in an, in an automobile accident where it's his fault I would not like to be sued for that because it has nothing to do with the partnership but sure enough if someone sues him and the partnership then whatever assets that I have in the partnership can be subject to that the lawsuit and its liability so the goal is to to maximize flexibility and to minimize your own personal risk so the limiting risk always depends on the type of business that you're in it always depends on the type of products and services that you're providing so let's think about some of those things when you're thinking about um, structuring your business you want to ask yourself what type of business am I running you know am I is this a product or is, is or am I delivering a service and then what type of products and what type of services um, what is my risk profile um, when I when I tell clients to think about this question I ask them to sit for a moment and think about what is the worst thing that can happen to me in this line of business before Jack ever 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 mentioned anything to Jill before he ever thought about expanding his business into a partnership one big question that he should have asked himself is what's the worst thing that can happen to me um, what what would happen if one of these trucks is in a, involved in an accident regardless of fault and toxic waste spills on the highway what am I going to be what am I going to do about that and what can happen to me in terms of liability if that were to happen are there other owners so the, the one one important question is are you already in a partnership well the reason why that question is is very important is are there other things that other partners can do that can impact my own personal liability that's why you always want to ask yourself if if I'm already in a partnership then we need to talk about and think about what 
kind of risk profile am I facing just by merely being involved in a, in a partnership? Do I anticipate other owners later? So when Jack started his business, um, he may have not have thought at the, at the beginning that later on I'll be asking Jill to join me. But Jack should have been thinking at that time, do, do I plan for this just to be my business forever? Or do one day, one day do I anticipate that there will be additional partners that will join forces with me? Tax considerations, and I'll talk more about those later. But you always want to think about what's the best structure for me from a taxing standpoint. And I'll say right now that it's always good to have a good CPA to grow and work with your company so that as you grow and you move into different directions, that CPA can give you advice about how the new scenarios and new situations will affect you tax-wise. Are there investors who have little to no involvement in the business? Investors are different from partners. Um, sometimes they're, they're friends and family, sometimes they're bankers, but they're basically third parties who, who either give you money as an investment or they loan you money. So you have to ask yourself, are there others involved who are not going to be part of the business, meaning not part of the business making the decision making process, but they will be involved and they will have an impact on my business from a financial standpoint. Is generating a profit the primary objective of the business? Believe it or not, there are a lot of um, in a lot of enterprises that people go into that are more like hobbies and, and fun things to do but the primary objective is not really to make a profit. And so you have to ask yourself, is this really about profit or is this more of a hobby or a good idea or, or a charity, something that I want to do for the community? Do you intend to pass the business on to your heirs? Um, I know a lot of businesses, a lot of business owners who don't want to pass the business on to the heirs because, for example, in many cases the children are, are doing something else or they're not, not interested in the business, and then others do. Well, when you're structuring your business, you want to think about do I want to, do I want to pass it on to my heirs, and if so, then what's the best structure to put it in so that it's easy to pass it on to my heirs? So what I'm going to talk about today is some of your basic business entities. There's more than just what's listed here. But what you see here is just a list of basic entities that I'll discuss briefly, um, starting with your sole proprietorship. Now, a sole proprietorship is the simplest form of business that you can be in. It is basically a one-man or one-woman operation. A business, is that, a business that is owned by a single individual. Now, the great thing about sole proprietorships is that you, you've got maximum autonomy. You don't have any bosses, per se. You don't have any partners that can hold you accountable to how many hours are you, are you going to work per day or, or what direction the business is going to go in. So you don't have other people telling you what to do. Um, and you only have yourself to answer to. Now, the biggest downside is that you have the maximum risk from a liability standpoint. So, um, if you are in your backyard and you're, and um, say you're, you're you're cutting grass and the lawnmower blade hits a rock, flies across the street, and um, breaks someone's window, you may have no money in your personal pockets. You may have no money in your on your own personal bank account, but you may have a million dollars in your business bank account. Well, that account is is just as subject to liability as it, as your own personal account because the law recognizes you and your business as one in the same. Now, the next form of um, business entity is your general partnership. 
that's more like Jack and Jill's business that I just described. You have two or more individuals who agree to be in business together. And that's that's all you need for a partnership. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need a partnership agreement. All you need is two people who come together to say we we want to be in business together. Now, the wonderful thing about partnerships is two minds are always better than one. Um, my partner and I, we've been together for almost 18, over 18 years now. And I can say that our business is a lot better off with 18 years of history of working together than it would have ever been had it just been me for 18 years. Um, we, you can share in the cost and the risk and management. There's a lot of things that I, that I do for the partnership that, my, that I do better than my partner, and there's a lot of things that he does that, that he does much better than me. And so we're better off together than we would be by ourselves. The other thing is about a partnership, unlike, say, a corporation, is that the profits are taxed are not taxed at the partnership level. Every year when my partner and I, when we do our tax tax return for the partnership as an entity, um, the the profits are passed through to us as partners. So, so the partnership doesn't necessarily get taxed from the standpoint of having to pay taxes. Those get um, basically tra um, shifted to us since we are a 50-50 partnership. I, I, we share the, in the profits 50-50. Now, the biggest downside of a partnership is that you have joint personal liability. So Jack and Jill are both jointly and severably liable for the accident on the highway that was caused by the, 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 the employee who was a drunk driver. So um, even though Jack wasn't driving the truck himself, he is personally liable for what happened at that accident. And, and um, even though it, it involved a drunk driver, well, the, whole, the sad thing is, what about Jill? Well, when Jill went into business for herself, all she wanted to do is wash trucks. She didn't, she, her plans were not to transport hazardous material, and she cared very little, probably, about hiring dr truck drivers who would be driving hazardous material, never probably, probably never even thought about it. But she, re I'm sure, received this, the shock of her life when she found out that the truck driver's liability now is her own personal liability, all the way down to her personal assets. Now, I'll say this right now. The best way to hedge against that problem is to have good liability insurance. Uh, my partner and I, we've got malpractice insurance, and we also have liability insurance. So if someone comes to our office and, say, slip down and fall, we've got insurance that will cover that. And that's So when you're in a general partnership, if, um, if you don't want to do anything other than be a, gen a general partner, you always want to make sure that you get good insurance. Now, what about a corporation? Um, a corporation is an organization authorized by law. So in all of our 50 states, there are laws in each state, and I'm, and I'm sure in D.C. also, that governs what it takes to set up a corporation. And in most states, the process is very, very simple. Um, until you get into, and this is where you need an attorney, structuring your, your, um, your shareholder agreements and all the types of things that you need in place to make sure that the, the partnership, excuse me, the corporation functions properly. But in terms of the basic structure of setting up a corporation, in most states, it's a very it's, it's a fairly simple process. Now, the primary advantage of a corporation is the limited liability. In this case, had had Jack and Jill's partnership been a corporation, the one great thing that Jack and Jill individually would have been able to rest assured of 
is that they would not have they would not have to face personal liability for the truck driver's um, accident. Yes, the business would been would have been liable, but not Jack and Jill personally. So the lawsuit in that situation would have been just against one defendant, the corporation. So the bet the, the primary advantage of a corporation is that the owners are shielded from personal liability. Now the biggest downside is the double taxation. Unlike your partnership where the um, the partners the taxes or the, the profits are passed down through the, to the partners and so the the real heavy lifting in terms of taxing is at the individual partners level in a corporation the corporation whatever the profits are the corporation is taxed at the corporate level for the profits and then in most cases corporations issue dividends so the the owners get their their part of the profits through dividends so when they get their dividend check for example that check is subject to personal taxation for the owner with respect to his or her share of the profits so that's the biggest downside to just a general corporation is it is taxed at two levels well um, the IRS put something in place called the S corporation to to help people in that situation an S corporation is simply a closely held corporation that chooses to be taxed. Now, I may I want to make that as put emphasis on that. If you want to to have a S corporation, you have to make an election to be taxed under subchapter X of um, the IRS code, the Internal Revenue Code. Um, you can get your CPA to do that, or whoever does your tax planning. Uh, you you would have to be you have to make that selection. Now what happens with that with an S corporation is the owners are afforded the benefits of limited liability. So you get all the great good things about being a corporation, meaning you are personally shielded from personal liability, but you're not taxed at the corporate level. The taxes in a in a S corporation, I'm sorry, the profits are passed down through to the shareholders and the only taxed at the shareholder level shareholder level now there are some dim there are some disadvantages for an S corporation um, there's a limit on the number of shareholders that you can have um, and the types of shareholders that you can have and um, you have to have you have to have consent from each of the shareholders to make the the election in the beginning so there um, there are some some limitations on an S corporation, but the great thing about them is that you get the um, the benefits of being a partnership, while also the benefits of a corporation that w where you are limited in terms of personal liability. Now, what about a a limited partnership? Um, a limited partnership is a general partnership with at least one or more limited partners. Now, the great benefit of a limited partnership is at least for the limited partner, the limited partner gets the advantage the advantage of having limited liability. So, um, the limited partner, for example, if Kenneth and I, my partner, if we were in a limited partnership and I was the limited partner, then I would not have to face any liability for something wrong or something um, that that something that Kenneth does from a liability standpoint but the downside is that I would have no per no um, ability to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business so the business Hold on one. Okay. 
So the limited liability, the, the, the limited liability for a limited partnership would be that the limited partner would not have to face the liability of the general partner, but the limited partner would not be able to participate in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. A professional corporation is simply a corporation that is primarily for professionals, for example, lawyers and doctors, engineering, engineers, and public accountants, and, and what have you. Now, they get the benefit, uh, your professional corporation, they, they get the benefits of a general corporation, um, and they can take advantage of certain tax deductions that they would not be able to take advantage of in a, in a general corporation. But the downside is, like I discussed earlier, they, they have to deal with the double taxation problem um, of being taxed at, at the two different levels. Limited liability company. A limited liability company is basically a, basically a blend um, between um, a corporation and a partnership. It, 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 it gets the benefits of being a basically a partnership, but it's only taxed at, a, at the single level, and you, and you don't have the double level taxation problem that you would in a, in a um, corporation. Um, but the downside is that that, there are, that the owners are personally responsible for paying certain um, employment taxes, unlike what you would have in an S corporation. When you're thinking about a limited liability company versus a corporation, I would suggest that the person, the client, should um, get with an attorney and a CPA that could tell you which structure is the best way to go between those two. Um, in the more recent years, we have been leaning more towards a limited liability company for various reasons, but when you're when you get that close to the decision, you really want to get with a good advisor that can tell you which is the best way to go based upon your own particular situation. Nonprofit corporations. I, I like talking about nonprofit corporations because a lot of times people, they want to do a, pro a nonprofit corporation. I call it the nonprofit for profit corporation because. Uh, many times the objective really is to make a profit, but um, they want to do a nonprofit corporation so that they could avoid paying taxes. So I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about what a nonprofit corporation is. A nonprofit or corporation is set up for purposes other than, and I emphasize, other than earning profits. So if your primary motive is to earn profits. That's not the. That is not the the, um, the nonprofit corporation is not the entity for you. Um, the other thing that you have to bear in mind is that nonprofit corporations, as a general rule, does not have shareholders. So, um, if a lot of times when people are are setting up these types of entities. There's a concept in the back of their mind about who's owning what portion or what what um, percentages of the business. That is, a, those two concepts don't go well together. Uh, the, that is the non-corporation, non-profit corporation, and the concept of ownership in terms of shareholders. Um, now, the advantage is that it, the advantage of, of being a non-profit is that you you don't have to pay taxes and of course you're eligible for grants and and many benefits that um, uh, many gratuitous type benefits that you would be el eligible for that you would not otherwise be eligible for if um, you were a for-profit corporation and, and of course once you get your um, all your proper paperwork from the IRS and from your particular state um, Businesses and individuals who make donations to you can make non-tax don donations, and that's always nice for um, for our, for businesses. 
Now the disadvantage is that you may never distribute any profits and if you do you can get in trouble by the government. So I, um, I've had and then here's the other thing that that um, a lot of people get really troubled about. Let's just say you set up some type of a, a group home or, or, or for a nonprofit group home and you ran this group home for your entire professional life and it, and it is a nonprofit corporation. And now you and you you set this up, say, with you and your wife. And now the two of you are ready to to, to retire, and you would like to cash out, and take your um, take your um, all of you sell your your business, and go on and maybe buy a, a, a an SUV and travel the country. Well, you can't sell a a nonprofit for a profit you basically have to distribute to another um, nonprofit organization and um, and there and there will be no profits from that transaction so if you if you're setting up a nonprofit corporation and of course you can work for the corporation and and even get a salary from the corporation but unlike other businesses for example my partnership with Kenneth, if we decided when we when we got old that we wanted to sell the partnership, if we could find someone to buy it, and move on with our lives, we could sell it and split the profits and move on with our lives. You can't do that with a nonprofit corporation. So if you're structuring it, structuring a nonprofit corporation, and you work for the corporation and that's your livelihood, you need to come you need to be thinking about some other retirement plan something other than selling the business and cashing out so we we've talked about sole proprietorships general partnerships limited partnerships corporations s corporations professional corporations limited liability companies and nonprofit corporations um I I practice in er several areas of law. One of the things that Kenneth and I did when we came together 18 years ago was we wanted to be problem solvers for small to mid-sized businesses. So we learned the various areas of business that small to, to mid-sized owners would have to think about as they um, go into business. And what you see here is just a list of things that we have been doing over the past 18 years. And I've got my contact information here if anyone's interested in giving us a call. That's excellent. Thanks so much, Dimitri. I mean, that there are quite a few things that we've got to understand when we're starting a business and and I think the biggest thing that you just mentioned was really that you can't just jump in and hope that things will work out for you or you can't just jump in and figure that they'll they'll come together eventually you've got to have a plan and that plan should include business structure what structure are you going to have for your business not only from a tax perspective not only from um, a what's the word I'm looking for not only from a branding or marketing perspective but also from your own protection and and what does a partnership look like what are the things that you need to understand and be careful about so that you can really be able to have a, an efficient business a profitable business and one that is around for for a long time or as long as you want it to be so yes. that 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 information is is priceless and I know the information that you shared just now was not um, information that was without value I mean you, you can probably find some of that by going to the SBA.gov website and kind of pouring through the information but then you're just reading it and you don't really have someone to explain it so he, having you explain it to us was a ridiculous value today and so um, you know I, I don't know I don't know what your rates are per hour but I know attorneys that charge 
upwards of 750 or 800 per hour and that's probably on the cheap end uh, just for business alignment or business strategy or business structuring so uh, you know I want I want everybody to, to recognize and understand that uh, this information is is of ridiculous value and it's not a value just because you're, you're paying an attorney a certain amount it's a value because it's going to save you ridiculous amounts of money in the long run <laughs> so yes it uh, will. yeah absolutely so I, I mean do you have any uh, closing thoughts or things that you want to share with us before we wrap here okay um, yes a, a, a couple one is uh, don't be afraid of, of um, having a good relationship with an attorney as I think back over the years of, of uh, representing clients um, the best relationship with an attorney is an attorney that knows you and knows your business so such that when you call him or her they understand what you're dealing with and can give you good sound advice based upon understanding your business yeah the um, for for um, my core clients I not only do I know the, the the owner of the business I know her her husband um, her children and I I know where they're trying to go as a family and when there's a when there's some type of ripple um, for example I'll know her parents I'll know that she's trying to help her mother who's getting up in age so a good relation with an, a good relationship with an attorney will pay big, big, big dividends that go beyond just the business relationship right um, the other thing is that um, when you are hiring an attorney um, I would if, if, if I were not a lawyer and I were hiring an, an attorney I would try to get an understanding of of um, how does that attorney practice law how do they solve problems are they proactive uh, are they um, are they really concerned about my business and where, where I'm trying to go and you will find that the, that over time the relationship will get better and better I've got clients now that I know um, only call at a certain time and some clients I'll, I'll call um, and find out uh, you know whether they're whether they're going to be in another country or not uh, I've got one client that travels in internationally a lot and before he goes I try to make sure that all of his legal business is in order because I know that if he calls me from 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 uh, a foreign country he's not gonna have a lot of time to talk and he's gonna need to give me some very clear and, and, and close instructions so having a good relationship with an attorney will pay you much much dividends excellent yep great great information great great advice on that one and I think a lot of people uh, are scared of, of attorneys probably because uh, we've you know, always we watch these drama shows, we watch the law shows, and we kind of have this picture of attorneys. But attorneys are people too. <laughs> oh well, yes. They, they can help you, and they can save you a lot of money as well. well so. They're generally scared of the cost. Uh, it, attorneys are expensive. Yeah. And so, a lot of people they are afraid of the cost. And yes, most of the time when you watch TV when you when there's an attorney showing up that usually means trouble <laughs> yep. but but um my my core clients um they know that when they call me that I, I've got their best interest in mind and usually when they call me it's time to come up with a solution to some kind of problem or it's time to come up with some kind of proactive measure to avoid a problem exactly exactly all right awesome. Okay. awesome I'm I'm really glad that you were able to share this information with us as, as I mentioned right at the beginning um, you know each of us has gifts skills and abilities that we've got to take care of that we've got to nourish that we've got to um, really push forward because 
as we do that, as we really use the gifts that we've been given, those are the best ways or those are the most authentic ways, I believe, to uh, run a business. And, and when you're running a business from a place of purpose, from a place that is heart-driven, it is something that really uh, helps you to move forward in, in a long-term way. It, it makes every day fun. It makes every day have a, a reason. It gives you a big why as you move forward each day. So thank you for sharing the, the, the structure part of this and how to move forward even in something that you love, even in a passion, there still needs to be a plan and a way to protect yourself as you move forward. So thanks so much for sharing that with us today, uh, Dimitri. I, okay. I, I, and thank right. you for the opportunity. Uh, it, I, it's my passion to serve and help others. Yes. So this was a great opportunity for me also. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. I want to remind you, if you've not signed up yet, head over to Purpose Power Profit. Dot com and let's get locked in so that you can you too can live a life of purpose power for profit bye bye